if you want to get this working, what you need to do is you download uh, Revive from uh, the link I put in the in the video description. Um, you extract the files in the Dirt Rally folder, and then this is a step that a lot of people are missing and getting a little bit confused on. You drag the Dirt Rally EXE over the top of the uh, the the x64 exe for the re the revive e exe and uh, that will launch the game you need to make sure that steam vr is actually on before you do this as well and that will launch dirt rally uh, into steam vr uh, and let you use the the vive on it now because we've obviously tried this with the with the rift first and uh, you know it's pretty bloody fantastic and after a bit of experimentation uh, with the with the vibe, it's pretty much exactly the same, apart from the fact that you can't lean on asynchronous time walk so much. So what I'm going to do in this video, uh, given that we know Dirt Rally is bloody fantastic in VR and it does work with the with the vibe perfectly fine, uh, what I want to focus on a little bit are some of the some of the visual settings for those of you with uh, slightly slower computers. Um, or those of you with moderately fast computers, you want to have everything run as best possible with with as few issues or as few uh, with as low a likelihood that you'll drop below the uh, the vital ninety frames a second. So, first of all, what I'm going to do is I load into the custom event. I'm, I'm, I'm well, I didn't mean to do that. I'm going to go to the custom event. I'm going to get load into the event that we did with the Rift. I was doing a bit of side by side comparisons. Um, on exactly the same track, exactly the same settings, just so I could get a, an idea of what it was like with either headset. Um, what is actually really noticeable with with the Vive, the scale is slightly different, but it actually feels better on the Vive in this case with uh, with the scale. Normally, with uh, Revive and games that are sort of have hacked uh, Vive support, the scale on the Vive is normally a bit, little bit smaller than on, on the Rift. Obviously, if it's a design for Vive game like Virtual Pool VR. It's all one-to-one -one and perfect. There's no problem. It, it, you know, it's worth bearing in mind that these drivers are a sort of an intermediary, thanks to Cross VR being insane and doing all this support for us. But um, yeah, so the, the scale actually seems slightly better to me on, on the Vive, and also I noticed that the the image seems a bit more crisp on the Vive. I, I always find like I feel a, a bit more presence with the with the Vive than the Rift. Uh, partly because the image has a Christmas to it, but also the screen is a lot brighter in the Vive. So um, the downside, as I say, though, is the Vive doesn't have asynchronous time warp and uh, reprojection, when I've tested it with uh, with this, causes the occasional uh, crash. So it's better to have reprojection off and just make sure that you hit that uh, 90 FPS constantly. So in terms of settings uh, that will get the game running fast with minimal visual impact uh, and, and to be honest with the with the VR um, you know with these settings when I've, I've I had it on the high set all on ultra before um, with these settings it's, it's actually not that much of a, a visual difference so I'll go to the quality settings I'll show you what settings we've got it on I've got the um, the night lighting on medium I haven't done a night stage yet Shadows on medium. You can actually flick through some of these and see how they affect it in game because uh, Codemasters, I think this is their Eden game engine, that, or it's an advancement on it. They, they developed this game engine years ago uh, with the first Operation Flashpoint game they did, and then since then I think they've been building on it. But it's a good engine in terms of um, you can change settings on the fly and see what they're doing. Um, just put the shadows on medium. You notice that high... Uh, and me high makes it you know looks nice medium they're a bit they're a bit um you know a little bit mucky in terms of the edges uh but when you put it on ultra that's a massive frame rate impact without <laughs> that much of a difference visually i, I found medium is a uh, perfectly fine um advanced fog we got off particles we got on medium weather high crowd ultra low again ultra low makes basically makes the crowd 2d but when you're pelting along the countryside like a lunatic, you can't notice them. We see we flick through here, ultra low, they're sort of 2D cutouts, <laughs> a little bit of transparency on them. And then that makes them 3D on low and then uh, medium. And they, the, the crowds have a big impact on um, frame rate, especially when you come around a corner and there's a, you know, a couple of hundred people in some of the stages, the German stages uh, especially. Uh, ultra low, though, gives you the effect of the crowd being there. But because they're 2D, they're basically, they basically have almost no impact on, on your performance. You can obviously just turn them off. But I like them on low because it makes the, makes the uh, stages feel populated and real. 
uh, ultra low is perfectly fine. Uh, cloth I've got on low. If you have it on off, you lose all the little uh, railings and, uh, you know, a bit of, um, what they call like tape to guide you around the track. So it actually affects your gameplay if you turn it off. So you probably want it on low and it seems to run fine with that. Ambient inclusion on low. Advanced ambient inclusion is off. I, mean, I haven't really noticed that much of a, uh, of a difference with ambient inclusion. Mirrors are put on low because you barely ever use them, apart from when you accidentally drive into a tree. Um, ground cover, again, low. It is nice to have that on higher, but, you know, it, it doesn't really affect the gameplay that much. But I put it on low and it's, it's perfectly fine. If you put it on high, you, it, get, it really affects frame rates. Put it on off, you can't see anything at all. So... Low is fine. It's more like the draw distance for stuff like these little bits of uh, fern and bracken. On the uh, more open areas, you notice it more going into the distance. But you can, you know, it's perfectly fine with it on low. Um, vehicle details on medium. That doesn't seem to make that much of a difference. So the cockpit looks fine. Track is on medium. Again, that doesn't make that much of a difference. It will depend from location to location. Trees on medium. You'll notice if you put them on uh, ultra low, they look terrible. It looks like some kind of PlayStation 1 game. Medium gets you 3D trees that look pretty decent. You know, they do the job. And when you're bombing along again, you won't notice it. And as you start putting the detail up, you'll notice it basically increases the, the detail distance. So the quality is higher further than distance. And I think it also increases the population of the objects. To be honest, um, medium is, is sort of the ideal, I'd say, because you get the 3D trees and they do the effect. And because the v VR draw distance isn't amazing, well, the draw distance is the same, but because the quality of the VR, the resolution isn't amazing, you don't notice it going into the distance as much as you would on a uh, on a 2D screen. Objects have got a medium. Again, it's, it's hard to see how that affects things. It's mostly just like little rocks and what have you on the floor. Uh, vehicle reflection is low. Water is on high. There's hardly any water in the game and it's not that advanced, so it doesn't really matter too much. Um, skid marks on and texture detail is on ultra because texture detail doesn't tend to affect frame rate that much in some games it does but in this it doesn't and most games you if you've got a modern like a sort of 900 series um nvidia graphics card texture detail you can normally just whack all the way up uh without too much of a frame rate effect uh shader detail we've got a medium you can fiddle with that i found medium to be a sort of happy in between didn't seem to make too much difference uh, anisotropic filtering actually uh, has a massive effect in VR. Well, I say massive, uh, quite a large effect in the, the anisotropic filtering. Uh, it's how the textures are filtered, stuff like uh, mip mapping and things. So basically, if you put it on ultra, you get nice crisp textures in the cockpit, and you notice it in VR. And also, the road surface looks a, a lot more crisp with it on ultra. Most games, anisotropic filtering doesn't actually use that much uh, power it's not like to cost you that many frame frames uh when you're running a game so i just stuck that in ultra and i think it's well worth keeping on ultra because it gets a little bit more crispness which makes up again for aspects of vr which are a little bit lacking at this point in time smoke is, uh shad smoke shadows are on i can just turn them off don't we don't need that um i'm not sure what impact that is these tracks it doesn't make too much difference probably uh, in dusk i need to try that out. i haven't actually tried that out to, to make an informed opinion on that but you know i doubt it'll have a massive effect but it'd be worth fiddling with uh, i think finland has a lot of like little fires and stuff and some some stages you have the the smoke and the light coming through it so it might be nicer to leave that on uh, advanced blending is off so there you go that's the graphics settings hope you're still with me and you haven't died of boredom but we'll uh, what we'll do then now is oh we've got the video modes uh, from what i understand the video modes on here don't affect the uh the uh, this what's going out onto your he head mounted display with the Vive at least. Uh, what it does affect is the the view on your screen, the, the sort of mirror view. And you might as well just turn this all the way down. Now I haven't fully experimented with this. This is partly going by what I've read from other people doing. I fiddled with it a little bit and didn't notice too much difference uh, on the, on the head mounted display. So what I'd recommend doing is just turning all these down. Um, v syncs off, refresh rate. Uh, I don't know. I just, I've, I'm pretty sure it's not affecting the display and it's just affecting the, the mirror view on the screen. So you might as well just turn it as low as possible. Full screen, you might as well keep off. Multi sampling off, it's all fine. That does the job. Um, oh, actually, multi sampling will affect what's on the head mounted display. Um, though I think you need to, uh, there you go. It does affect what's on the, on the HMD. But if you put multi sampling on, it starts looking, uh, it starts really hammering your uh, your graphics card so 
that's something you're going to want to leave <laughs> in, in unless you've got a uh, you know a really fast computer and a really decent graphics card. Strangely, um, with it with the settings that I've gone at the, got on at the moment, it's not actually um, that the aliasing isn't that prominent. It's it's a lot more crisp than a set of course with default settings, for example, and that's just running on um, render to you know render target on one point oh. So this is all. So I'm going to just put this on. 1928 by 1080 and see what happens here. Is that affecting the resolution? Let's have a look. No, I don't think it is. So video mode is not affecting the resolution, but um, the um, the multi sampling does uh, affect it. Obviously, it puts AA onto the onto the image uh, at the cost of you needing a beast of a computer. So that's the uh, that's the graphics settings. Um, you can obviously save a, a preset in case you're going to go from your screen, or you can choose a preset. I think you can save presets. No, you can't. You can. They've got presets there. I thought you could save a preset, which would be handy if you're going back to your screen. Um, but to be honest, why would you ever want to play a driving game on a screen when you've got VR? Um, but there we go. So that's that's the graphics settings. Thanks for watching this video It's gone on a little bit So I'm stopping it here and then we're gonna jump into another video and do a direct comparison between the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift Hope this video helped you get your settings running faster and uh, help those of you that couldn't get the game to work on the Vive I'll see you in the next video we do until then. Goodbye